Hello and welcome to West Wales. My name's Becca and I'm a hand spinner, knitter and natural dyer and you're very welcome to my slightly windy garden. If you're an old friend, welcome back. So in this video I thought I would do a roundup of a project that I started back in sort of February, March, which was to grow my own dye plants. And although I've been natural dyeing for about 35 years, I've mostly used forage plants and kind of things from the compost bin. I haven't actually grown my own plants, so I thought this year would be the year that I started to do it. I will leave a link in the description below to the whole playlist, kind of how the project started so that you can really see the progression. But what I thought I'd do here is actually just have a little think about what's worked, what hasn't. And I also have one last dive at that I want to do with my woad plants before I dig them up and plant some onions to overwinter. So when I started out, I decided that I was going to grow some calendula marigolds, which you sort of get a, a nice yellow from, some dyers chamomile, which are good for yellows and also producing a green, some woad for blue, some madder for red, and then I had a few other little bits and pieces. So I had some red onions to get a nice sort of rich rust red or rust sort of orange. And I had some devil's bit scabious to get another blue. And to cut a very long story short, the slugs ate some of them and some of them didn't work. And so really the ones that have been most successful have been the calendula, the woad and oh weld I didn't talk about weld either did I so weld well weld which you get a yellow or a green from but uh, weld is a perennial plant and you actually take the dye from the second year's growth and so they they're still planted they're still growing well but I won't really see any results until next year with those so we're coming to the end of the season and what I've been doing is been harvesting some of the flowers from the marigolds and from the dyer's chamomile because they dry well and I'll be able to carry on using those throughout the um, throughout the winter my dyes. I did a dye vat for the blue and that was hard work but very successful and I'll I'll just drop in a picture of the dye, kind of the dyeing results, and you can um, have a look at the video, which again will be in the playlist, so you can have a look at that if you want to. And then madder. Madder, they failed to germinate, and I've done a bit more research, and really the best way to get madder plants is by propagating them from little little plants like this, sort of two-year-old plants, and you do root cuttings. I couldn't get any of these two-year-old plants at the time when I was planning the garden because they had sold out. And really, it's this time of the year where I've been able to just buy one more. And it has rather dawned on me that because you get the colour from five-year-old roots, it's going to be a very long term project and I'm not going to get a lot of dye from this. So this is going to get potted up and I'm going to sort of try and uh, build up the stocks of that. In the meantime, over the winter, I will do some dyeing experiments with Madder Powder, which is widely available. And so although I won't have grown that dye, I will actually experiment with it. So when finally in five years time. Oh my goodness, am I really talking about doing this for the next five years? <laughs> in five years time, I'll be able to uh, get successful results with my homegrown madder. Well, fingers crossed, I will get successful results. So next experiment and probably final experiment for this year is going to be a yeast vat using woad. And because you get the best blues from leaves that are harvested in July and August, it is likely that now we're in September. Sorry, the dog's barking off stage. Now we're in September. The colours are not going to be so good and I'm much more likely to sort of get greys or pinks or maybe some sort of lavender type colours. So this is my little patch of woad and I need 250 grams of leaves, which I think I've just about got for my next dive at. And then these plants are going to come out 
I probably will leave one to go to seed to collect seed for the following year but then these are going to come out and I'm going to grow something else in this spot because I don't want to have a problem with diseases and you know it's it's good gardening management to actually rotate your crops and I have definitely been growing this as a crop. Well, 217 grams. In theory, not really enough, but we're going to go for it anyway. So the next stage is to cut up all the leaves. And, you know, don't have to do anything special, just literally a pair of scissors, cut them into bits. The method and recipe I'm using for this comes from Jenny Dean's book, Wild Colour. And so I'm making the yeast vat as last time you made the hydrosulfic vat. The next stage is to add boiling water. And I learnt from my last experience and I'm doing this one litre at a time. And for 250 grams or thereabouts of leaves, you need nine litres of water. These leaves now need to steep in the boiling water for approximately an hour. Next, I'm preparing the yeast and I need two tablespoons full of sugar and two tablespoons full of yeast topped up with warm water. I'm using Easy Bake Yeast, the recipe didn't specify, but this I think is going to activate very quickly as that's exactly what it does when you add it to bread. So make sure that the water is not so hot it's going to kill the yeast and this was about 250 millilitres of water. Leave this to sit in a warm place and it's ready to use when you've got a foam on the top. The leaves have been steeping for about an hour and we've got this lovely sherry colour. Need to now wait until the temperature reaches 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 50 degrees centigrade. Then add two tablespoons full of washing soda. The method I'm using today says that you should leave the leaves of the woad actually in the dye bath. It's a little unusual because most dye vats you actually take the dye material out before you use it. But this is very clear, so I am leaving those leaves in the dye vat. I've let this cool a little bit more, so it's just about hot enough for me to put my finger in. So I can now add the yeast. And what I'm going for here is a change in the colour. And it should change to a sort of greeny yellow which is obviously quite different from the sherry colour that we had. My book was saying this can take quite some time even up to 48 hours. Well I mean I got a colour change pretty much instantly. I did let it sit for a little while to develop a little more but I was satisfied that I'd got the required colour change fairly quickly. Today I'm going to be over dyeing some of the unsuccessful dye experiments I had earlier in the year on wool. Then I've got some viscose and I've tied that in a knot and a little piece of cotton. So here is my vat and I've just been soaking my various things I'm going to dye. So, moment of truth, I think this is kind of is that greeny yellow? Well, it's currently, yeah, it's green. Okay, let's go for it. So I've got to try not to introduce oxygen.
<laughs> it's a bit full. And here comes the magic bit. I'm getting a really lovely colour change. I'm just rinsing this out in clean water. Then I'm going to put it on my drying rack and let it sit in the air for about 45 minutes. If I want to get a stronger colour, I then repeat the process for as many times as I want to. In theory, the colour getting stronger each time I do the process. If this was a stronger dye vat, in other words, if I'd had more material, more dye material, then I probably would have got more of a colour change. But I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. But you never really know until it's dry it's what it's going to look like. By the magic of editing it is the next day and there has been quite a colour change in what I initially pulled out of the vat yesterday. So once I've finished my walk and actually the sun needs to kind of slightly change direction, I'll explain in a minute, uh, once I've come back from my walk I will sit down and just look at the results I got and the results in comparison to the first woad dye that I did that was with the, oh my goodness, gonna forget the name of it, uh, sulfur, sulfur. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna just write the name of the vat in the video when I edit it, because I can't remember the name of it. The other one I did, I'll put it, I'll put it on screen. I'll put it on screen. Now, why am I not filming at the house at the moment because of the sun? I want to film in the conservatory because that has the best light. It's a bit echoey, but the light, the light is pretty good. However, this, at the moment, the sun is absolutely streaming in through the windows and I really can't kind of see what I'm doing. It's reflecting off the camera and it's just all a bit horrid. And I have just remembered that when I watch Kate from The Last Homely House, when she videos things in her conservatory, she has those lovely curtains that she pulls across so that she can actually have a camera on because otherwise you just either you are blinded or your viewers are blinded by the sun coming through the windows so i think on my project list i have to make some curtains for the conservatory which will also help with the the sound because it won't be bouncing off the window so it'll make it less echoey well we've gone from one extreme to the other with light and now we're losing the light so i'm going to do this very quickly here are the results of dyeing with woad and yeast. And there you go, sort of um, bluey gray, which is exactly what they said. Didn't really work particularly well on the uh, cotton and on the viscose, yeah. I mean, there's a slight color change, but basically nothing. So, I'm just, oh, excuse me. Right, so this is what we got with the other vat. Obviously, compare them. Obviously, I barely had enough leaves, really. So it was um, definitely an experiment. And I mean, I got a colour and this will blend nicely. And, you know, it's uh, it's all good fun, isn't it? So I think that is it for this video. Other than to say thank you so much for all the new subscribers coming and supporting the channel. And thank you so much. If you're an old subscriber, I really, really do appreciate you. So until next time, have a wonderful creative week.